So, for the last few days, um, hopefully you can hear me, the wind's not too bad. For the last few days, you know I have been working on getting the titanium vegetable peelers and... Oh, very dark. Titanium vegetable peelers and titanium cheese slicers. Trying to get a finish on those. You know, we did a test last night and it sort of finally finished um, this morning. And the result is way, way worse than I was hoping for. It's still a good finish, but it's darker, there's some lines in it. It's not good. And so we're going to be doing something different right now. What we're going to do is take a big step back because if you've been following the videos you know I've been going on and on about the greatness of this machine here and it is for volume and you know certainly the quality of finish in certain respects which are you know kind of difficult to get into but I kind of had left this machine the centrifugal machine not doing much with it we have to do a test with it today um so this is the handle of the titanium cheese slicer. Now truthfully I can see in this little screen here that it looks better on here than it actually does in real life. That's because from a distance it looks like a mirror awesome polish but when you get up close it doesn't. It's just the nature of the metal or reflection. Or So I compared that to the cheese slicer that I did a year ago that was done in this machine here and I'd completely forgotten how good the finish was on that. And I'm comparing this new finish done in this machine to the old finish done in this machine. And honestly, it doesn't compare. I, it's, it's like I have to, I have to now do a test in this centrifugal machine. Uh, yeah, I kind of feel like I'm going on about it now, but that's the plan for today. Take a look at this. Stop the machine just to check, you know, that everything's going okay. Usually we just leave it for two hours and that happened. Um, it's like the perfect size to get jammed sideways in the barrel. These problems never seem to end. I started racking my brain trying to think, you know, how can we not get them jammed? Can we add some to the end of it? Can we pack some material in? And, and I thought, no, let's just snap the end of them off. That'll solve it. I'm just changing out the media in the barrel. We have done the, the rough cut down. Oh yeah, we've done the rough cut down um, phase. What I need to do now is another sort of cut down phase, but a bit smoother. There's five different processes at different times with different stuff to, to get the finish. So, um, yeah, it's a little bit involved, but it's got to be done.
What I've been doing is testing bearings for spinners today. It's a Japanese bearing, so I thought, oh, 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 could be good. It's all steel, or chrome steel, should I say. It spun for nine seconds when I put it in a spinner, uh, when I got it. So I took the shields off, and as you could see, there was, um, <laughs> it was full of lubricant. So I used acetone, got rid of all that, spun it again, got 56 seconds, which is completely abysmal. So that bearing isn't even close to making the cut for the for, for what I'm going to put in the spinners. But, you know, the testing continues. I will do a video on what I'm learning and how I'm figuring out the best bearing or bearings to use um, as it goes on. A uh, little bit more tumbling tonight. Was away having some dinner there. Um, it is... What time is it? It's about 10 past 7 at night. Um, on a Friday night, no less. This is how... Uh, this is how I spend my Friday nights. Not everyone, but like, because there's a priority of these titanium vegetable peelers that I keep going on and on about, um, you know, everything gets dropped for that, pretty much. I mean, I'm still doing um, emails and, and sorting out other stuff and that kind of thing, looking at like cam software, etc., etc. But still, certain things have to have a priority. So what we're doing now is we are taking these out of the one, two, of the third process um, of tumbling, and we got two more to go. So we're going to put them in a couple more sessions, and I have a sneaky feeling it'll go well because you know it's it's a process that I'm really familiar with. But um, yeah, it's been an interesting day and few days and few weeks. Quick question. Um, well, it's actually a slightly long question, but. The answer shouldn't be too long. Hey Magnus, I'm not sure if you've been asked this question before or not, and I'm not, and I'm sure you probably have your reasons regarding it, but with all your prototyping and such, I find myself wondering, wouldn't it be more practical and cost efficient if you made prototypes in cheaper materials like steel or aluminium? I am aware that both of those materials aren't as strong or as pretty or as light slash heavy etc. as titanium is in the general sense, but I feel that if you made cheaper prototypes, especially with the knowledge you have now regarding the strength of titanium, you might be able to save yourself a bit of a headache in the long run. Now I have answered that before, um, but perhaps in a different way. It's really simple actually. Um, there really isn't any headaches as such. You know, I, I typically work through a design, because my products are, are simple, they're minimalist, they're, you know, they're fairly uh, not too complex, not loads of moving parts or loads of parts or anything like that. Try to keep it minimal. I pretty much get the design in my head and that's it for the most part. So, you know, depending on the project, like say the titanium pen, the pocket clip is a little bit tricky and my machinist was able to work with that. So, more often than not, um, in terms of say machining, it's just as much hassle to to do it in aluminium, and in fact more hassle to do it in say aluminium and then uh, titanium, than it is just to start with titanium, because say for, for CNC machining, the how you go about machining aluminium, you know, the tools you use, the, the cutting speeds and all that sort of stuff that I don't really know that much about, is completely different for aluminium than titanium. So if you prove the process in aluminium, then you gotta prove the process in titanium. Now, that's a little bit different for if you are, let's say, trying to find if something will work. And, you know, for instance, if I'm gonna find my keys. Here's a, here's a great example. This is, this is probably what I showed you, should have shown you first of all. So this here is my keychain pocket clip. I made one initially, two or three years ago. And then I made like, this is the V2 version. And that took like quite a bit of development and I had to cut and test and cut and test and cut and test and tweak in that, you know, with the water jet cutter. And, you know, it needed to be done in titanium because I was testing the springiness and that kind of thing. And the springiness and the weight and such of this particular object is intrinsically, the, the titanium is an intrinsic part of it. Like I couldn't use aluminium or stainless steel or brass or copper or any of that stuff because it'd be too weak and the, and the spring would bend um, and possibly break, at least bend, it just wouldn't, wouldn't work. So I had to use titanium. Um, I think that's pretty much the answer. I don't 
three. I probably should have thought about it a bit more, but that should give you an idea. If you're still not sure, or if anyone else isn't sure, ask me again, and I'll, you know, I'll let my subconscious think about it overnight, and you know, maybe come with a better answer tomorrow. That is the tumbling finished with. Um, I will grab this just now. My dad's helping me uh, take the stuff out. It's a pretty good finish. It's tough to tell, it's still a little bit wet. I mean, I'm gonna show you what it's like, but the thing is, the thing is, is, oh, <laughs> scratch it there. Um, the tricky thing is, is that what it looks like on film is always a little bit different to what it looks like in real life. But, you know, I'll show it to you. I'll show it to you anyway. You know, that is that's pretty good. It's pretty consistent. Fairly smooth. Um, well, I think it could be a little bit better, but... I, it wasn't really a new test, it was a system, it was a process that we always use um, for that kind of thing. It was just to sort of see how it compares to that and it's very different. So I've got a lot to think about. Interestingly enough, right now, I know more about tumbling than I have ever known in my entire life. Especially, you know, I've learned so much in the last few days and weeks. However, I know so little in terms of tumbling. Like, I know nothing. I know more than I've ever known, but I know nothing. Um, and it's, uh, it's interesting, it's humbling, it's uh, well, it should be. And so I've got a good quote for you today. It was sent to me by someone a number of months ago or weeks ago and I sort of forgot about it and found it. The quote is by John F. Kennedy and he said, the greater our knowledge increases, the more our ignorance unfolds.